Hey everybody, how's it going? It's your boy Garden Sound. And today I'm going to show you a couple different ways to sidechain, but specifically I'm going to be highlighting a plugin that I've been using a lot recently. Um, full disclosure, this plugin was provided to me uh, free of charge, so I um, have to let you guys know that I'm sort of uh, tasked to review this thing, um, given the option to do so or not, and I have to say, I think it's well worth the $30. But we'll go over it later. This plugin is called Chain Shaper. Um, it's available by Noir Labs, and I'll put a link to this particular page in the description below. So what do I mean when I say side chaining? Um, side chaining is the process by which you are ducking a signal for, via another signal. Uh, so you have signal A and signal B, and when signal A fires, it ducks signal B a little bit for the duration or a part of the duration, or at least maybe the transient of signal A. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to set up a little example of traditional side chaining. I'm going to set up an example of what I've been doing for the last few years, and then I'm going to show you how Chain Shaper does it better and more intuitively. There's, a, there's another plugin that does a similar thing called Gatekeeper, and I'm not making the argument this, that this one is better or worse. I'm just saying that it's a similar type of thing. Um, the drawback here, of course, is that it is only for Ableton because it is a Max for Live device. However, Gatekeeper um, is only 9 bucks more and apparently works on all platforms. Um, I will have to check this out at some point. I know Mr. Bill uses this one, but... I haven't had the pleasure of operating it yet, so all I can speak for it is this one. I'm gonna set up a quick side chain. Let's get a little fast forward going. Uh, this snare's a little too loud. Two clicks. Excellent. I've had a lot of coffee. <laughs> Um, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna sidechain this thing because it's kind of in the way. Like there's there's some bass notes in here. I mean, like bass frequencies. I mean, so if I stick spectrum on this thing, check it out. See this stuff down here around 100 hertz. That's the sub frequency. We don't need that interfering with the sub inside of our kick. Or if we have an entirely new sub channel, um, we want to sidechain that as well to the kick. We want these kicks and snares to come through. Um, if you look at the snare here, let's stick a spectrum on this guy. We got a big peak around 348 hertz, and we got another one sort of medium peak around 820 something hertz. And if you look at this one again, let's let's go back to this guy. This guy. All right, there again. There's our 800 hertz right here. It's starting to roll off around there, but we've got clearly interference between this sound and the other sound. This one's actually a little bit louder. Um, in those specific uh, frequency bands, you know, in the kick right here and in the snare over here. We don't want that to happen. That's bad. That's bad. Okay. That was a terrible Mr. Mackey. Gardner, put, put Mr. Mackey saying that's bad. Drugs are bad. You shouldn't do drugs. Uh, if you do them, you're bad. Because drugs are bad, okay? <laughs> drugs are bad, okay? There we go. <laughs> I knew I had it in me. Um, coffee's bad, okay? No, coffee's great, Mr. Mackey. What are you talking about? All right, let's get this channel. <laughs> All right, so on our melodic shit, what we're going to do is put a compressor. Where's our compressor? Compressor. I've got a default that I like to use called volume shaping side chain. Perfect. Uh, so what this is going to do is duck the signal super duper quick um, on a ratio of infinite to one uh, with a really, really, really tight release too. So we're just going to go like really quickly duck it. Uh, we're going to take the input from our drums group. Um, actually, let's see where's our kick specifically. This, here's, this is what this sounds like right here. but there's already a problem here. We just wanted to duck like a little bit, not a whole lot, but it, but it's doing a long period of time because if you look at it, this drum has a sub, uh, has like a sub roll off, has like a sub release on it. You get this, so it doesn't stop, really. it doesn't release the signal until this sound is done, right? That's what's happening here. So when this sound happens, this sound gets turned down a bit so that this can come through a bit better. Now, this sounds absolutely terrible if we unsolo. I call that the amateur ducking effect. That's when somebody doesn't know how to use a sidechain. So we're not going to do that, all right? What we're going to do instead is uh, what I've been doing for, for about two years now, which is go into my uh, user library and my presets and grab the audio effects. Uh, what am I doing? Excuse me. It's instruments, instrument rack, and then click. What we're going to do is we're going to toss the click on this track up here. I need to make this white because that's the correct color for a kick or a sidechain or whatever. Now, I want to sidechain both the snare and the kick, right? 
So what I'm going to do, instead of using just the kick drum, okay, what I'm going to do is put a very, 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 very short, very, very loud sample. Okay, I'm, I'm going to play it for you, but but it's I'm, I'm warning you right now, it sounds terrible. Okay, that's the noise. And what I'm going to do is play that very short noise again, just so I can duck on the transients of these drums, this particular sound right here. So let's write out the same pattern that we've been doing for our kicks and our snares. All right, it's going to take just a second. Let's get a fast forward, Gardner. All right, there we go. So now we have the click pattern happening on where our drums are happening. So we're going to turn this channel off. It's still firing. It's going to fire audio signal, and we're just going to capture that audio signal after it's done um, on this melodic channel. So let's go over here, and I'm going to say, instead of taking the audio from kick, let's take the audio from our click. In fact, you can rename this uh, pound SC. And that way, if you need to, this is a trick that my friend Musar showed me. That way, let's pretend you're here, and you're like, oh, man, there's like a million... Well, in some of my projects, there'll be like a whole page of options. You can just type in the number one, boom, and you're good to go. How does this sound now? See how it's just ducking it a little bit? That's pretty great. Let's lower the threshold. I want like a full-on duck, like maybe a negative 45 decibels. Like Now, if we want more of an effect, we can turn the release up. Let's go like 100 milliseconds. This is going to sound pretty good. Here's the difference between the two. Let's turn the side chain off. You get those you get those peaks, you get those nodes, you get that muddiness. We don't want that. Much 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 cleaner. Okay. So this is how I've been doing it using this side chain channel and this melodic um crap like side chaining it that way to the kick and the snare. This is fine. It works just fine. There's nothing wrong with this. Um, the other thing you can do is use a utility like Chain Shaper in order to get things even more dialed in. The advantage is you don't have to change this particular MIDI pattern every time your kick and your snare change. Lately, I've been writing a lot of music where my kick and my snare are changing all the time. So instead of having to go back in time and rewrite out this MIDI pattern, what we can do is instead use something like Chain Shaper. I'm going to turn off this compressor. I'm going to turn off the spectrum. We don't need either of these things where we're going. And as you can hear, we've got the muddiness problem again. All right, let's use Chain Shaper. You can see what it does is it provides a waveform here and tells you what's going on. This is going to look a bit smoother if you have a Macintosh computer. Uh, for those of you on Windows, you're kind of stuck with this rendering. It has to use the CPU. It's a bit smoother in the demos, so don't be thrown off when you see this. I have a PC. And there's this line here. And this line is the shape, all right? This is exactly what's happening, but we have no input yet. So what I'm going to do um, is uh, I click the wrong thing. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> I want to give you just an overview of how this thing works. So the device itself has a lot of knobs and buttons, but they're a little confusing, I'm not going to lie, from just looking at it. Um, this is turning the entire plugin on and off. This is soloing channel one. This is our channel selection. As you can see, you can have up to six separate side chains on one plugin. So I could use channel one for my kick and channel two for my snare. I'll show you why you want to do that later. It's very cool. Um, and also, there's the default setting um, for how you want the uh, attack and release. Uh, ratio to 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 work. I find that medium is great for most applications involving the the detail oriented like IDM sort of stuff. Fine if you're crazy. Wide is going to be more like a bass nectar effect where you get that pwap 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 with the long release on it. Um, and then sync is going to just basically take all of the inputs away, and it's just going to ask you for um like a, a note or a dotted triplet exactly what you want things to be synced to. So you could sync it to literally a click that never changes. Um, I haven't used that function yet, uh, but I, I have messed around with it. I can verify that it works. Um, this is the reset button. So if you want to reset the entire plugin back to its defaults, you can click this. Um, this is going to give you a pop out of the spectrum. You can change um, the, the different, like, you know, grid, oscilloscope length, how far it's sampling. Um, I don't find this particularly useful. 
again because it's just not very smooth. Uh, it's it's not like a Fab Filter plugin, uh, especially on Windows. But it might be different in your case. I find this is the most helpful way to view that. Um, there's a preferences page. Oop, that's not the preferences page. This is the global sensitivity and input um, for your input. <laughs> this is your dry wet knob for this channel. Uh, and where's the preferences panel? There it is. Settings. This is how much look ahead you have. Generally, I find you don't need that six millisecond look ahead. I just leave it on 2.8. Um, this is smoothing out the clicks. So if you've noticed um, aliasing with a side chain before, this will smooth that out to almost nothing. Um, oscilloscope on, click smoothing on, reset inputs on. Um, yeah, very cool. You can also show your tool tips. I have mine turned off because I'm a fucking pro. What I'm going to do now is start to use this thing after we've gone over the overview here. Uh, input, I'm going to use the kick for my input one. I'm going to set it to post effects so it can actually sample the audio. The red is where the kick is happening. So we need to make this a bit tighter. All right, now check this out. That's fine and good. We can duck the entire signal using the kick. Fine. How is that any different than the traditional sidechain that we set up earlier? It's not. Here's where it shines. Let's, let's, uh, let's go ahead and duck that on a multiband. So I'm going to turn on my low band. So this is only things 120 hertz and lower. I'm going to double that to 240. All right. We're going to use the same settings. Dry wet's going to go down a bit. What I was doing there was soloing the low band. Now check this out. I'm going to unsolo the low band. What we've done here is we've literally only side-chained the frequencies that are interfering. That's rad. Let's do the same thing for the snare. So that's channel one. Let's go over to channel two. All right, channel two, input, snurr. Same setting, post effects. And now we're only going to side-chain the mid and upper bands. All right, cool. Now, let's go back in time and turn on the rest of the track. So there's our fully sidechained signal. As you can see on channel one, I've got the kick um, sidechained it just a little bit dry wet. Um, we could increase that a little bit if we wanted to. I'm just starting to get a little bit of aliasing though. And this uh, channel two is sidechained the snare, just the high band. We'll turn that on again. Yeah, I think it's much cleaner. Listen to this. Here's the comparison. Much more precise. And here's with nothing on. That immediately cleans up the signal. So like I said, I've been using this a ton on some personal projects. Uh, I have two albums that are coming out uh, in 2019 that are going to have this uh, plug-in used on some tracks. Um, I have officially switched to using this instead of my old method of using the click track. Um, I definitely want to mess with Gatekeeper a bit. I understand that's sort of the quote-unquote industry standard for this type of plugin right now. Um, I just got to get the capital for it. 
Uh, if you'd like to help me get the capital for it, you can subscribe to my Patreon page. <laughs> hey, um, and if anybody from Polyverse is watching, please send me an NFR, NFR uh, copy. I'd love to review it. Um, anyway, uh, that being said, some some cons to this particular plugin. Uh, the UI is a bit messy, and I don't mean that it's hard to read. I mean that it's just it's very high contrast. So, for instance, um, I find that my vision kind of gets lost in this sea of green and red, and I forget like what's turned on and what's not turned on. That is pretty confusing just to have the green be on and the red be off, um, and all the symbols are exactly the same. So what does this button do? Why is there a power button here? Nothing's really labeled. It's all very um, mess around with it until you understand it type of um, approach here. Not exactly intuitive right from the get-go. However, I will say that after clicking around with it for a solid five to 10 hours, I understand what each button does and I rarely get lost in the plugin uh, anymore. So there is a steep learning curve. Once you get past it, um, it's gone for good. Uh, the other thing I wanna say about this plugin is that it's not exactly the most optimized plugin. It is running through Max for Live. Um, I find that Max for Live plugins don't run very well on Windows. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to test this particular plugin on my Mac. Um, but usually I find that it runs better on a Mac. So maybe there's just some optimization that needs to be done for windows based Ableton installations. Um, I know that I'm running a pretty hefty computer and I know that when I get about 10 to 15 of these plugins in any given set, I have to turn my buffer way up on my audio card. Um, as well as uh, just how Ableton is, you know, running uh, CPU wise, it gets pretty hot. That shouldn't be happening on my computer. It's pretty beefy. Um, I have a core i7 7700K. 32 gigs of RAM, and I'm running a solid state drive, um, both import and export. So everything is fully optimized to run as fast as possible. Um, I can throw five or six instances of Pro MB on a track and not have any not have any issue. Uh, but if I put you know five or six instances of this on a track, I'm definitely going to start to have an issue. So there is some optimization that needs to be done to make this competitive. Um, but otherwise, I would give this a solid four out of five. Um, I think it's worth 30 bucks. If you want to check it out, I'm going to link below to Synth, uh, sorry, not Synth War, <laughs> Noir Labs' page as well as this particular plugin's page. Thank you very much for letting me review it. I had a great time using it and it's part of my workflow now. So that's, that's uh, not a bad review. My name is Garden Sound. Thank you for watching and I'll see y'all next time.